Welcome to another episode of Crosstalk. My name is Kevin Tachi, and I will be your host for the next 30 minutes. As you've come to know this program, what we like to do is feature things around the, from around the community, whether we talk about an upcoming election, uh, whether we discuss an issue that uh, both towns, women in Hanson that we serve, is passionate about, or well, maybe it's a, an upcoming event. I think uh, this conversation we're going to have today, we can kind of uh, put file this under that. We have uh, two fantastic folks from the Massasoit Theater Company. We have Mr. Nathan Fogg is joining us. Nathan, how are you? I'm good, Kevin. How are you? Nathan, what brings you here today? Well, Kevin, today we are here to talk about the Massasoit Theater Company's upcoming production of Oliver, the Lionel Bart musical based on the Charles Dickens novel Oliver Twist. Ah. And now, who did you pick to be Oliver Twist who, that, in the lead role? Oh. And it was a little bit of a bloodbath at the auditions, but in the end, the winner was Anna Anise, who's sitting to my right. Welcome to the show, Anna. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself, Anna. Well, I'm 10 years old, and I go to school at Angelo Elementary. Awesome. Um, I've been singing, acting, and dancing for seven years at Capitone School Performing Arts. Wow. And... Um, that's basically all I do. Okay. Uh, I, I have to ask you, so to tell me some of the uh, the roles that you've had and maybe the most challenging one that you've had to date. Um, I've been in a lot of shows, but I think the most challenging one would have to be Chip in Beauty and the Beast because my costume, I had to balance on my shoulders and oh. it, it was hard. <laughs> really? Yeah. But you made it through. I did. <laughs> did you learn a few things from, from that experience? Yeah. Just just keep going. If you make a mistake, I made a lot of mistakes in that show, so it really taught me to keep going. You know what they, they you know what they say about making mistakes, right? What? It helps you learn. That's how you learn is by the mistakes that, that you uh, that you make. Uh, talk to me about about your young star here. Well, wh what was it about her that you said she has to be the one that takes the lead all of her twist? Well, first of all, she came to the audition for the callback very prepared. Mm. Um, so she came in knowing her music. She, we had sent them dialogue home with them so they could come prepared to the callback. And she came back and she was pretty much off book for the scenes we had sent home. Um, That's which serious. Which tells you a lot about how a person rehearses. <clears throat> um, and when you're carrying a whole show, like Anna will be in Oliver, you know, that's important. It's important to know they're going to go home, do their homework, and come back ready to work. Mm. Um, she has a great voice, a great set of pipes, um, and she can belt, and she can sing in her head voice, which is required for the show. It's mm. both. She has some ballads, and then she has some other stuff that she can kind of let loose on. Um, it's super high music, um, which is so it's usually cast as a girl. And when we went into that, we knew. We were like, okay, well, we might find a boy who can do it, but usually it's a girl. Um, because the boys whose voices haven't changed yet aren't really old enough to kind of carry a show. Mm. It's rare that you find that much experience at such a young age. So we were fortunate enough that Anna had come in. There were a couple of other contenders for the role, but ultimately, in the end, we felt that she was the best fit. Talk to me about uh, how it's been going as far as with the show so far. What, tell me a little bit about Oliver Twist. What is it that? What do you understand about this particular show? Um, Oliver Twist is basically about a young orphan who gets sold to an undertaker after asking for more food and he runs away from there because they treat him badly and he meets this boy named the Artful Dodger and he soon and he soon finds a home with a gang of pit pocketers and that's where the show kind of sets off. Picks up. Yeah. She pretty much hit the nail on the head, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, you know, the story ultimately is one of triumph, right? Oliver goes from kind of a bad situation to a worse situation, mm. winds up with the pickpockets, which seems like a better situation, but ultimately really isn't, because they're out for themselves too. They're thieves, they're gonna train him how to steal uh, for their own good. And then he winds up stealing from who turns out to be his grandfather, and winds up in the home of Mr. Brownlow um, who ultimately adopts Oliver. Um, so it's, it's really an interesting tale. I mean, all the people that Oliver meets along the way are kind of absurd a little bit. They're on the extreme end of 
villainous. Mm. You know, they all have glimmers of humor to them, but none of them are really nice. <laughs> none of them are really nice people. They're all kind of self-involved and out for themselves only. Wait, that's like today's world. Well, you know. <laughs> Not kidding. much has changed. Not much. Not no. much has changed. How how was it that Oliver was uh, was chosen? How was this chosen as far as that for a show to do this year? Well, we talked. We kind of did a mini seasons of Dickens classics. So we started with a Christmas Carol and then opted to do Oliver. Um, I, I think the elements behind choosing it are that it is traditionally viewed as a family show. Mm. You know, the music's very upbeat, but it does have kind of meteor characters in it. Um, even though it is a kid's show and the music is upbeat, the subject matter in the show tends to kind of veer on the darker side. Um, there's, you know, obviously there's the abuse that Oliver has suffered at the hands of the orphanage mm. and the undertakers. And then there's the you know human trafficking. There are prostitutes and thieves that Oliver meets up with when he's in the pickpocket's den. Um, and the romantic relationship in the show focuses around Nancy and like kind of the king of the thieves, Bill Sykes. And their relationship's abusive. He's violent. Um, and ultimately, she decides to stay with him, and he beats her to death. So there are a lot of kind of heavy subject matters packaged up in this family musical. Um, and so we kind of went that route. Not every family musical has to be, you know, fluff. Okay. Yeah, and I asked you earlier as far as uh, some of the challenges that you've had with past characters. What are, some of the ca what are some of the challenges that you're finding with this particular character? Well, Oliver's a boy, so I had to learn how to walk like a boy. And that was hard for me because I'm a complete girly girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Were you surprised with, that you were picked to be Oliver? I mean, what was what was your reaction when you, you know, there, there obviously wasn't a, a second choice in this in this yeah. particular play, right? Yeah, I was really excited because everyone that I auditioned with was really talented, and I thought my chances were like slim to none. So, it's and how how well have you meshed with with the, the other uh, actors that are in this show? Well, most of the act actors and actresses I didn't know and then I did have like a few friends so I liked meeting new people and <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I got to ask besides yourself uh, Nathan we know that you're the one who kind of is leading the, re the direction for the show. Uh, who else do you are you working with uh, in regards to music direction? Sure. Costumes. I mean, I know the answers, but I want you to share sure. that with our. Oh our no, viewers. we have we have a great staff on hand for Oliver. Um, I am doing the direction and the scenic design. Um, Jen Spagone, who was here with me for Christmas Carol last time, is doing the costume design. Okay. Tara McSweeney Morrison is doing the choreography. Oh, okay. And Janice Isa Wright is doing the music direction. Um, so we have a, a great team, and we've all worked together, you know, numerous times. Matt Gaminski is back doing lighting design, um, which will be wonderful. We're happy to have him back. So we really kind of have a, a crack team. We have Aaron Thomas doing stage management for us. Very and nice. So it's it's nice. A lot of people have come back, you know, returned to the Mass Soy Theater Company to work on this piece, and so we're happy to have everyone back. Give me uh, give me some of the folks who are uh, on the cast. Give me give me the list of folks who are that folks might uh, remember from either, either previous shows at Massasoit or some of the other uh, community sure. theater uh, outlets around the area. Uh, let's see. Adam Joy is playing our Fagan, and folks will remember him from The Wedding Singer over at the Orpheum Theater. Mm -hmm. um, Catherine Joy is playing Widow Corny, and she just finished Songs for a New World with MMAS over in Mansfield. Wow. Um, the gentleman playing Mr. Bumble is named Thomas Epstein, and people all over the place will know him as King Richard from King Richard's Fair. Um, he's been doing King Richard for seven or eight years now. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so he, he has joined the cast. Um, a young lady by the name of Kathleen Comer is playing Nancy. Um, she did Little Women in Hingham. She's done a couple of other things locally. Um, Emily Buckley and Craig O'Connor are playing the Sourberries, which are the Undertaker characters. Mm. Uh, Massasoit audiences will remember Craig from The Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Yeah, he played job. the gatekeeper, and then he also played um, 
Bob Cratchit, the clerk in Christmas Carol. So he'll be a familiar face to our audiences. Um, that about rounds up the principles. Oh, Abigail Mack is playing the Artful Dodger. Um, and she is from, where is she from? Bridgewater. Bridgewater. <laughs> and they, her family owns a dancing school. Um, Julie School of Dance, formerly Julie at the Joppa, over on Route 18. Okay. So those people will be familiar with Abby. She's wonderful, and so we have a great, great little cast. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I gotta ask. I gotta ask you, Anna. As far as being a child actor, I mean, what is it like for you when it comes to uh, an appro approaching a character and, and assimilating the character? Do you have a, a particular way of doing it? Well. Once I found out that I was auditioning for Oliver, I immediately went to the computer and I found out like what Oliver was about because that's like the first time I've actually really heard of Oliver. Mm. And um, but after I got Oliver, that's the research still continued and I watched the movie. So I think what I do to get into a character is find other people's variations and kind of make it my own. Is it sometimes tough though that you're not always able to find all, whether it's a video or or an adaptation of it or has it been relatively easy with the roles that you've chosen it's in the past? It's been relatively easy because I've done like common musicals so not all of them were like unknown so. What's some of the stuff that you've learned from Nathan so far in, in trying to really get into character and become Oliver? Um, Definitely um, walking like a boy. Um, he showed you how to do that? Yeah. Okay. He, um, Diction? Yes, definitely. It's his favorite word. Mm -hmm. It's important. It yeah. is important. And, yeah, he just really helped me be all over. <laughs> I have to ask you, you know, being the director, you can, you could take a particular show and kind of put your own, your own signature on it. Sure. What have you done to kind of put your own signature on this particular show. Well, we're only five rehearsals in right now. That's it? So yeah, oh, we've wow. only had five, but we're almost done with act one. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, we're doing pretty good. But um, from a design perspective, we're kind of taking a Victorian look to the show with a modern feel. And I don't want to say steampunk necessarily, but Ooh. kind of hinging on steampunk. Um, and we're looking at the darker aspects of the show. Um, because usually they're glossed over, but most of the show is very dark. Um, so, you know, we're kind of examining the abusive relationship between Nancy and Bill and the thievery at Fagin's Den and what Fagin's really about and maybe he's not such a nice guy after all. He's not really doing it to help the kids. He's really in it for himself. Um, and that's really what the show is about, you know, the choices that you make and where you find yourself and if you can change. Right. The, ultimately, at the end of the show, Fagin, you know, says, "I need to think about this again. Maybe I'm not going to be a thief my whole life. Maybe there are other roads I could have taken or will take in the future." And so we're kind of looking at more of the adult themes in the show than we are just kind of doing like the happy kids musical. Mm. Um, and it's it's interesting because the subject matter, like I said, is kind of dark, and the music is so fun. It's like toe tapping music. Everyone knows it. Consider yourself. Everyone knows. Yep. Where is love? Food, glorious food. Like everyone knows these songs as these kind of happy, joyous songs. And the situations that they find themselves in in the musical aren't happy at all. The the, the places these songs show up in the musical are really kind of dire. These kids are starving, and they're singing about this food. It's not a happy moment for these kids. Um, so we're kind of looking at it from that perspective and seeing, you know, how we can make it our own instead of just glossing over all of the social issues in it. All right. So I, I have to ask you, is, are you more uh, someone who's favorite to do a musical than a straight on show? What, what, do you, what do you think? I mean, you're part of a musical now. Is there just something special about a musical compared to a straight show? Yeah, I like, uh, I prefer musicals more because I feel like they're more fun to put on because you have like the acting rehearsals, but then you learn the dances, and then it's, it's a good tie. How has now? Uh, how much dancing do you have in this? Do you have Do you have dancing in this at all? Yes, my big number would probably be "Consider Yourself" and "Who Will Buy," and um, I don't know what the dances will be like yet, but I'm sure that Tara has something. You're, you're working in through mind. them now, though, right? Yeah. We are. I mean, I. Tara and I spoke about it really early on in the process, like way before auditions, 
how we wanted this production of Oliver to maybe be a little more dancey than it normally is. Um, typically, if you, if you go and you do a search for a video like Anna has done for research, right. a lot of these musical numbers are kind of staged pretty solitary and kind of like, you know, stand alone and sing. Right. And we were kind of hoping to make it a little bit dancier. Um, not extremely dancey because ultimately, like I said, most of them aren't really in a happy situation and you know, it would be kind of awkward if all these you know, workhouse boys suddenly busted out into a gigantic dance number. But we are trying to make it athletic because they're boys um, and yet still dancey. You still want it to be a musical, mm. you know? Uh, and those are the things that make musicals different from yeah. plays, the music, the dancing. What's, what, what are some of the technical challenges? I know that Massasoit Theatre Company likes to really go all out now. Have you snuck French doors in, into this at all yet? Or I'm no, just checking. Okay. Um, this Cause I know I, I know you. <laughs> this one's going to be a little more stripped down than you might expect from really? this theater company, yes. Well, like I said, we were talking about a little bit of a modern feel, a little bit of a steampunk feel, and so the set's a little more industrial mm. and a lot more framing and metal than it is actual practical scenery. Um, which is kind of exciting because that's not something I usually do. You're right. Usually I want gigantic scenery. And, yeah. um, so technically for this one, from a scenic perspective anyway, there aren't too many challenges. Okay. It's um, kind of served up straightforward and stripped down. Now, did, did you drop the set or was this somebody else? I did. You did? Yep. So you kind of not only the director, but you also, uh, because I know that you've done the set for, for other shows in the past. Yes. I've, most of them, actually. Most of them in the last 10 years. Um, <laughs> And this time I'm directing and doing the set design, which you know, kind of gives me a leg up because I'm going to have a clear understanding of how my set is going to work mm. um, from a direction standpoint, which is nice. The flow will be really good. But uh, yeah, not too many technical challenges, though, I don't think. Mm. It's not that kind of show. Okay. I get to ask you, Anna, what is, what is it, what's the fun of it from when you're first studying, do you go from learning your role, going mm -hmm. off book? To working with, with, you know, you work in the different scenes to when you're finally able to get on the set. Uh, obviously, he's already in the, in the works of trying to put him together. What's it like that first time you get to step on the set? You know, like Tech Week, yeah. you're there and you get to be there. What's that like for you? It's really fun because I feel like that's when, like, the show kind of begins because that's when you know that opening night soon and, like, you start counting down and mm. I like... I like stepping onto a set. Now, has Jen Spagone taken you aside yet and talked to you about what your co what your costume, what your outfits are going to be like for the show? Well, um, she brought me aside and she measured me, and that's the but beginning. The workhouse boys were supposed to get their own shoes, so I got my boots already and I've been practicing in them, and that was kind of the first step to knowing that Oliver was coming soon. So. Okay, and how how difficult is that in work wearing those boots? They're actually more comfortable than you think. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Definitely something good to know. I, you must be encouraged by hearing that, hear, hearing her say that, because you want to make sure that your whoever you're, is in your lead role is comfortable, and and it's and it's seamless from the opening sure. of the curtain to to the end. Well, yeah. You don't want to ever put your actors in a place where they're distracted. You know, uncomfortable shoes, uncomfortable costumes. You try your best um, to make them as comfortable as possible because. The audience will know if an actor is uncomfortable on stage. You can see. You can see it all over their face if they're yeah, distracted. Their body they're, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and so you try and do everything to support them in their environment, in their costumes. Um, I mean, sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's like, well, I don't want to wear a wig. Well, too bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you just have to say, well, you have to wear this. Um, but it's encouraging to hear that the boots are comfortable because mm -hmm. all 20 of the kids in the show are going to have to wear them. Sure. Um, <clears throat> No, I have to ask you, what's it like for you? Again, Nathan says you basically kind of already know your role, you know your character, you know all your lines. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you do to be able to know your lines? I mean, you're, you're 10 years old, and that's incredible that you're like that. And there's some people like me, it probably takes me until they're like, <laughs> you got to get off book tomorrow. And it's like, okay. Well, when I get a script, I like can't stop reading it. Okay. So I think that's one of the things that helped me. Um, and also, like, you have to not only your lines, but you have to memorize Everybody other else's, people's yeah. lines. And I love remembering other people's things, so. <laughs> you've, never, you've never whispered some of their lines when, they're, when you were in the show, have you? Oh, no. <laughs> but you had thought them in your head, huh? Yep. 
How about as far as re re memorizing, is it easier to, to remember a song that you're going to sing than it is your lines, or is it vice versa? Um, I think that that songs are easier because they have more of a beat to it. The melody and, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, and then a line, you just have to think of your own melody to say it at, so. I'm going to say, it was interesting, before we sat down here and, and talked, I, I get to learn a couple of things about our, our, two, our two guests. So I'm just going to throw them out there. And actually, Nathan's, Nathan kind of added a little fuel to the fire by mentioning steampunk. Steampunk, anybody who's a geek, steampunk is the big thing these days. I mean, it is, if you go to any of the Comic-Cons, steampunk, it's how can you out-steampunk the next person. So I'm, I'm very impressed sure. with you, Nathan. And Nathan also is somebody, I just found out, somebody who, who likes... Uh, Superheroes. I do, I do. Is that your guilty pleasure? Is there, or is there anything else that, that did anything that, when you're not being, you know, on, you know, guiding a, a young lady like Anna? Well, my partner and I, he likes Batman and I like Captain America. So if you were to come to our apartment at Christmas, you would think that like a ten-year-old and an eleven-year-old <laughs> lived there because everything. There's like stuffed animals, there's games, there's clothes, there's pajamas. It's like, hmm, maybe we need to get some adult Christmas presents here. But no, I'm kind of a geek at heart. Um, yeah, and we do, we do want to do some elements of steampunk. It won't be like the Comic-Con. We're not trying to out-steampunk anybody. No, no, but, it, but, but it's, it's nice. It's, it's, it's now. It's what people are doing. And it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the fun thing. Absolutely. Please. Now, what about you, young lady? Do you have any hobbies when you're not uh, on stage? What do, you, what, what do you like to do in your, your spare time? Um, well, I love to read, but I don't really have time for that anymore now that I have Oliver singing, dancing, acting. There's a lot of things on my plate. Now, you, I know we're early on in the process here, and we were still a ways away, but, I mean, what are some of the challenges that you see before you? I mean, what's your, what's your, hot, what's your favorite hobby? You said reading? So does that mean, like, you're not going to be going perusing the bookstore for a favorite book that you're not going to be able to get to because you're going to be doing this? Well, I think I'd find time to read a book, but I'm trying to look for the book Oliver so I could read oh. and oh. kind of get no some No success ideas. in that? Well... I'm in the middle of a book right now, so I'm trying to finish that up and then get Oliver. What type of books do you like? To, do you like to read? Is there a particular type? Um, I like mysteries, but then I also like just, just books. <laughs> in general. Yeah. It's good to hear. I like hearing kids who 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 say that they they like to read, and because it's something that it carries over with you when you're you're big like Nathan Nathan and I. Um, I, I have to ask you. We haven't talked about the important thing. When does the show open? The show is the second and third weekend in May, so May 8th, 9th, 10th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. Um, the Friday and Saturday shows are at 8 p.m., and the Sunday show is at 3, the shows are at 3 o'clock. Um, if you bring your mom on Mother's Day, we'll give her a free flower. Um, that's one of the promotions clever. we're doing. Yeah, bring your mom to the show. Definitely clever. Um, definitely. And you can get tickets by calling the box office at 508-427-1234 or going online at www.massasoya.mass.edu. <laughs> you like that question mark? I was like, edu? I kind of like mark? that. It's just kind of look kind, kind um, of... Uh, kind well, there's of a long, there's a much longer extension that you have to click. You have to like go through all these menus to get there. And I don't know the long extension, but it's the Mass Soya website. How is the show kind of coming together right now? I, I, again, you said it's kind of early on. You, you, <laughs> Knock on wood, it's going great. Um, you know, sometimes the process isn't so smooth, and this process um, is going kind of seamlessly, um, which, you know, gives but me it, pause. It, but I have to ask you, though, is that, uh, being, a, being a director, I mean, do you kind of worry when, when here you're getting, you get to a certain point and things are kind of going along? Aren't you almost, as a director, going... Oh, All yeah. right, I know the shoes drop, and oh, yeah. I'm waiting for it. You're waiting for the impending disaster, of course. Um, but right now, it's going great. Mm. Um, so we'll hopefully we don't have any impending disasters, and if we do, we'll deal with them. I mean, we have time. So uh, no, it's going really well. People are coming prepared. They're coming with good energy. I think there's a really good vibe amongst the cast, mm. um, which is important. How, how important is it that you see a cast come together? You both have had a chance to be part of cast that end up it ends up being like like a family. Am I right? I'm sure you there's so many people that you've worked with in the past that you, you probably talk to on social media or you probably see them at shows like this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
How about you? How about I mean, what's some of the um, what's some of the you, the things that you've seen over the years? Because you you are quite the theater. Well, I, I think it's cats don't always come together the way you're talking, and ultimately, I mean, as long as everyone conducts themselves professionally, mm. it doesn't actually matter. But there's something special when it does click. Mm. You know, every once in a while you get into a show and people get along famously, and then those people you kind of remain in the circle with for years and years and years and years and years down the road. Um, you know, I know people. Give me some examples. Give me some examples of some shows that that you've done, and you're gonna do the same thing. Some of the sure. shows that you've you've been a part of, and that that you're still part of that that, that circle, and you you have fond memories. So you, Nathan first. Sure. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, one that comes to mind was the first show I ever directed for Mass Soy, which was Godspell. And um, fantastic show. It was a summer show, and we had a great time. And it was, we really had this kind of broad spectrum cast of people from like, you know, 14 to 50. It was all over the place, the cast was. And um, when you get a mix like that, you're not really sure how it's going to gel. Yep. And I still talk to most of them now. Um, and that was easily a decade ago. He, even, um, you still, the, the, the guy who's producing this, Mark Rush, though, you still talk oh, to yeah. him too. Yeah. He, was, he produced that and was in it. Really? Oh, yeah. I might, I might add that he's actually helping us out here with the production today. So kudos, <laughs> kudos to you, Mark, when you're watching this later. Um, how about you, as far as any shows that you've done? We've got just a couple of minutes left here. But uh, shows that you've been that, that that have gelled and that you still remember to this day. Well, Oliver is my first community theater. Oh. All of my other shows are at Capitone School of Performing Arts. So I still see them all, but some seniors have gone, but they come back and... I have some fun shows with them. <laughs> I might also add that Anna has, is, is, has a, also something that we have in common and we've had a chance to. Not only is she related to a great radio personality, uh, Charlie Bergeron, uh, <laughs> that uh, I had a, I've had a chance to interact with him. He's a great guy. So it's very fun to know that, uh, that he is uh, a relative of yours. We won't say exactly what he is, but <laughs> that, that they are directly related. Anything you want to say in closing before we say goodbye to everybody who's watching? I hope everyone comes to Oliver. <laughs> okay. Anything you want to say uh, before we wrap things up, my friend? Well, I mean, thank you for having us today. It's always a pleasure to see you. And I, too, hope everybody comes to Oliver. Um, get your tickets. They're going fast. Again, give the information just in case folks are just tuning in. Sure. Um, Oliver opens May 8th and runs through the 17th, Fridays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 3 p.m. Tickets can be purchased by calling the box office at 508-427-1234 or going to the Massasoit website at www.massasoit.mass.edu. Nathan, and I want to thank both of you for coming here. And I want to thank uh, you folks for uh, tuning in. And again, please check out Community Theater. It's so much better than going to Boston, I, I personally think, and, and you have to know the hard work that goes into a production like Oliver Twist. If you have a chance, give them a call, 508-427-1234. Until next time, you've been watching Crosstalk. Have a great day. We're no longer just sedentary, we're stationary. And that's bad news for your bones. Because bones need weight-bearing activity to grow strong and stay strong. So get up, get out, get moving. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Never heard a word I say.